Okay. Good afternoon. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the February 21st, 2023 PTSA General Membership Meeting. Um, we will go over the um, the agenda. We are the, the, we're, first. We're going to go over the PTSA mission statement. And thank you, everybody, for joining here. I believe we have quorum, right, Carson? <laughs> I don't think we do, Nadia. You said it's seven. Yeah. So without me, have... it's <clears throat> yeah. I think we have six members present. Okay. With me, it's seven, but I don't think I count, right? Um, without you, it's five. <clears throat> oh, without me, it's five? Okay, okay. So that's completely fine. I don't think we have any voting to do today. And if we do need to vote, we'll, um, we will then do another meeting and maybe we'll just be with the board members, right? Okay, so again, this um, meeting is recorded. And again, this is the February 21st, 2023 meeting for the Clarksburg High School PTSA. The welcome and PTSA mission statement or the PTSA mission statement is to make every child's potential a reality by engaging and empowering families and communities to advocate for all children. I have shared the agenda, so um, hopefully we don't need to review it once again, but just in case the, the agenda usually for the PTSA meetings, we're gonna go over the meeting minutes, um, current openings within the PTSA, the report of the officers, principals connect, committee reports, delegate reports, cluster coordinator reports, old business, new business, and some action items. Usually we also have some special topics that we don't have a special topic today um, for the February meeting. So hopefully we'll have a special topic for March. And, and I know we definitely will have one for April. And then May is the elections. Um, so if we could we even do the approval of agenda, Carson? <laughs> um, I guess we did not. Do we need to do that? I mean, with the amount of numbers we have here, is that still okay? I mean, we don't have quorum, so I don't think we can vote. So I would just say, can we just proceed without voting on the agenda? Or Yeah, we'll just proceed with the agenda. We've shared it already. And so we're going to continue forward. Okay, Dick. So um, the meeting minutes will be shared from the March 2023 meeting, so then we can continue forward then. Um, we have we have one delegate position still open, committee chairs, as always, faculty representative and student representative. So if you know anybody who would like to fill those positions, please let us know. We also welcome anybody who wants to join the after prom team. After prom is one of the biggest events for the PTSA and the high school, right? So we would love for anybody to join you can support as little or as much as you can and in any way possible. We love your input, we love your um, we love your active support too. So in any way that you can, please let us know. Um, the report of the officer, so it's the president, VP of education and treasurer. Our VP of education, Sonali Sankar is not here today, but I will go over it for her. Nadia Blavamil is our treasurer, so hopefully she'll be able to review from her end and then I'll share mine from the president's side. So the press for the report for my end, um, we reached out to MCPD, the MAD organization, and a new organization called SOUL for the Substance Misuse Overuse Assembly, which will be held at CHS. Um, tentative date is April 14th. We may broadcast it if conducted via Zoom to all the Cl Clarksburg cluster schools. So we've met with the Clarksburg cluster president and we've shared this idea and they are open for it. So we hope we can proceed with this. We're still in the organizational process. I'm also part of the, uh, as, as, as the president, I'm also part of the cluster coordinator team. And we've met with area PTA, PTA presidents and also cluster principals. We do this every month. We discuss opportunities to support the students in the cluster schools. A few of them that keeps coming up is like additional tutoring by perhaps um, high school students to elementary school or middle school students. Where we've been talking about the cluster fair as well, either to joining the Clarksburg Kite Festival or a separate event at the Clarksburg Yard. Additionally, we've connected with the Indonesian American Association and Clarksburg Can to continue food distributions. We have up until June 2023 to conduct food distributions. So we just need a location every single month or maybe every other month for the location for the distribution. We've also reached out to Board of Education member Julie Yang about joining our PTSA meeting to share along with Board of Education member Grace Rivera Oven uh, their journeys as community advocates, especially for students and the school community. 
We've also reached out to Council Member Marilyn Balcom to discuss Clarksburg High School capacity and as well as cluster school pedestrian safety concerns, amongst others. So those are in the works and hopefully we'll get more information to you all once we either have conducted the meetings or whenever we are able to do the presentations with them. Any questions? If now we're gonna continue forward. Um, for the VP of Education, I don't hear any questions, so we're gonna continue. For the VP of Education reports, um, Sonali has been a great um, connector with Tudor doctors. So we're trying to do another SAT mock test in March. Prior to the SA to CHS SAT day, which is on March 22nd, 2023 for juniors. So hopefully we're able to reach, uh, we're, we're able to hold that. And then when we do get that information, we will share. Um, since you're here, Nadia, did you want to share this? Are you able My to see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My phone was all <laughs> over the place. So. Okay. You're fine. All right. All right. So I'm on my phone, so I don't see as well. So you want to go forward with it, Nadia? I would appreciate it. Sure, that's completely fine, especially if you're on your phone. So let me yeah. share on your behalf. Um, okay. So this is the report of the officers. This is the monthly reconciliations um, for December. As you can see, there was a PayPal transfer for the cookie exchange for staff and cheat staff staff. I'm not speaking well today, I'm so sorry. For staff and teachers for $520.10. These wonderfully came from uh, CHS families. And then the expenses, mm -hmm. there is the reimbursement for um, for the beat, for the back to school sign for the back to school yard sign for four hundred twenty one dollars and twenty three cents for the Outback Steakhouse grilled chicken for two hundred seventy one dollars and seventy three cents, and then back to um, the staff lunch and supplies as well as another um, for staff luncheon for one hundred twenty one dollars seventy seven and two hundred and three dollars and ninety six cents. There was an error that came through to the um, PayPal site, so that was three dollars. So total expenses for December was one thousand twenty one dollars and sixty nine cents. And then for January, that's January. Um, we deposited um, two hundred fifteen dollars from Jersey Mike's for one hundred fifty and sixty five dollars separately. Um, for we received a check from Clarksburg High School Boosters Club for the Clarksburg High School Back to School Yard sign for two hundred and ten dollars. And then we received a check from America's Charities for $13 and additional member hub deposits for $50. So the total income for January is $488. And then the expenses in January is uh, the dues for the MCCPTA for 129 members. That is $129. Um, for national PTA is $548. And then there's re the reimbursement for the staff and staff staff and teachers cookie exchange for $438.44. The total expense is $1,115.69 for January. The balance as a result became $4,017.99. And then for February, which is this month, we received two donations. Oh, we received two donations for, we have quorum. <laughs> I got excited. We received um, two donations um, from Member Hub. Welcome, Janeth, um, for $10 and $30, $30. And then the PayPal transfer for the cookie exchange and the sweet treats of 100, the total is $173.05 is still in process. So it's coming, it was processed on uh, February 19th. So the total income for February so far is $213.05. There are expenses coming up, but we haven't written the checks out for them. So we didn't put it out on here. So the total balance after those transfers clear, so we have $4,231.04. Um, current balance before the transfer clears is $4,057.99. Any questions from the for the treasurer or the treasurer's report? Sorry. No questions? Okie dokie. We're going to, oh, now it's Mr. Wusu's turn. Mr. Wusu, your principles connect. Do you have a, do you, do you want me to stop sharing and you can share your screen? No, I was not able to put something together. I apologize. 
Um, okay. <laughs> so I, I, I have a, I mean, right now we, we are in the midst of, well, all schools are in, in staffing. So uh, we received our staffing based on our student population and course requests. So we did that in early, well, through January, you know, the, the registration process. And now we're in the middle of trying to post vacancies. And so we did that today and we'll have a job fair on March 1st. Some cool courses that we are um, offering and continuing to offer. Um, the APIA course, which is the Asian Pacific Islander um, course. Um, we are also going to offer, we already offer African American history and African American uh, lit. We are going to offer the AP African American um, history course. So we're going to probably pull some kids from the African American history course into the AP course. Um, we already have been offering personal finance, which has grown. Um, and so uh, that's that's a nice thing. What I'd like to eventually do is get into some offering more business courses because I think a lot of kids go into business not ever having taken a business course. Um, but it's also at the cost of economics. We used to offer um, large economics classes, but I think a lot of kids have gone into the personal finance, which is fine. Um, and then also, um, before the pandemic, uh, we were pushing strong with offering multivariable calculus, and then that kind of died down because Damascus students were in, um, I think Seneca Valley students were coming over to us for multivariable calculus. It's the highest level math course in MCPS. Um, but we have about 15 kids that are going to be taking multivariable calculus. So I'm proud to say we're gonna be offering that again. And having been at the uh, Maryland event yesterday, we know that offering these courses um, gives kids a boost to get into some of these colleges and or those scholarships for those schools that don't have these courses. It's not necessarily, well, I don't know. They said it's not counted against you, but I think it kind of is. If, if you're not in the course and somebody is, I, just, I don't know. So um, we try to offer as many um, diverse courses as we can, obviously based off of where students want to take besides the um, courses that they have to take. These All these basically elective courses are, are good courses to take. Um, other things, um, we are continuing with our SIP work and so um, our school improvement planning work and that meant that we were taking feedback from families, we took feedback from staff, and um, tomorrow we're actually sharing that feedback with um, students, uh, sorry, not students, with our staff through a rolling professional development meeting where um, we'll be looking at those responses. I'd like to probably for our next PTSA meeting kind of do the same thing, kind of sharing that data. Um, I think we had less than <laughs> less than 100 people fill out the parent survey or caregiver survey. So um, just kind of sharing that information. We asked a series of questions um, and just to try to get some feedback and then also kind of next steps with it to um, just improve. Um, the last piece I wanted to talk about and then take questions is I put in my um, Sunday message about our hall sweeps. We've been doing hall sweeps um, from before I got to Clarksburg and just continuing. Um, but the one thing that has seen an increase in all MCPS schools due to primarily due to the state of Maryland changing the, the requirements for the loss of credit policy before, if you miss a certain number of classes, you could lose credit, but you had the opportunity to regain that credit. The COMAR or, you know, the, the code of Maryland uh, changed into in regards to that policy saying that, you know, attendance should not count for grades. So, for example, kids can miss, I don't know, 50 classes, come in for two or three classes, make up some tests and still pass. Um, so there's no kind of seat time requirement. And what, what that results in is obviously kids skipping classes, kids coming late to classes, um, that kind of thing. And it's a, every school is having the issues. Um, doesn't matter where you are, every school is kind of having that issue of kind of how do you you know motivate kids and get them there and so we've been doing hall sweeps as almost like a not a last resort but another kind of intervention our first kind of obvious thing is is talking to kids um making sure that when they're in the building we're we, we are in the hallways kind of making sure they get to classes um making sure that the lessons are engaging you know we're talking to kids we you know we have a panel of kids we talk to and say hey why are kids not going to classes or coming late to classes or kind of doing stuff? And it comes down to basically, there's no there's no penalty. Um, there's no penalty if they get there um, 15 minutes late for a 40 minute class um, because we say that you're you're tardy 
um, if you are less than, you know, more than 50%, is that right? More than 50% um, uh, late to class. So bottom line is we we are doing hall sweeps multiple times in a day. Um, the first, uh, if you're if you caught me for the first time, you just a warning, hey, please be on time to classes. The second time we document it and then we also call a parent or guardian and say, hey, your child's been late. Um, can you please have a conversation with them? And then the third time we give uh, lunch, lunch kind of uh, tutoring. So um, where they are during lunchtime, they are with um, tutors and a staff member to uh, work on things. Um, so that's where we are with it. Um, it's we've been it's it, it's it's uh, it's not as bad as um, as it could be. But it is a it is a concern because we do have kids that aren't just coming to school at all. Those that's it's catching those kids that are in the building. That's one thing. But then there's some kids that aren't coming to school at all, and so um, you know we we are working with those. We're doing home visits. Um, our counselors are talking to them. Our social workers talking to them because there's some class avoidance, school avoidance kind of thing um, going on. So um, those are the three topics I wanted to share and open it up to any questions for me. Thank you, sir. So anyone here, this is a great time to ask a question for Mr. Abusu. If not, we can put it towards the end of the of the meeting. I know we don't have a special topic, but maybe we can utilize that for like, you know, a community discussion of some kind. Um, Hi, this is Nadia. I have a quick question. Um, next year, is enrollment increase or decrease? Great question. Next year, enrollment is increasing. Um, currently, uh, our senior class is at five 25 or so, but every class behind it, juniors, sophomores, and freshmen are above 650. And so um, next year we'll all be above 600 um, with the incoming freshman class right now, slated to be close to like almost 680. Um, so um, yes, we, we are slated to be larger than we are now. Thank you. That's exciting. <laughs> yes. That's a lot of kids. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, the funny thing you said about the hall sweep is my son was like, we can't do anything in Clarksburg. I said, what do you mean? He was like, we were in the parking lot and the security guard told us to go home. I was like, because you should have went home. <laughs> yeah, that was the day. There were about nine kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, that's, Don't you I mean, love our kids? Yeah, but it, yes. it's, it's, I, I get it too, because I, I said this mm -hmm. at, in the assemblies is that, you know, if we were at QO or even um, Seneca, they could literally walk across the street. But with Clarksburg, you're not close to anything. And, mm -hmm. you know, if, if, we, if we did have an open lunch, they would crowd Subway, they would crowd Harris Teeter, um, and they wouldn't get back in time. And so mm -hmm. um, I just, I worry about kids jumping into cars and just going places because it's, it's not close. You go into Milestone, that's the closest thing, but then everybody's going to go there. So then you go to uh, downtown or that Germantown area, and it's just it's just too much. It's just... Yeah. So anyway, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great question. Thank you, Nadia P. You're welcome. <laughs> Anyone have any other questions? Again, great time to just hang out with Mr. Wusu here. Just frankly, what's great for these meetings, you can actually engage the principal without having to wait. <laughs> if no questions right now, we can save it until the end. But thank you for your uh, presentation, Mr. Wusu. I think that was very, very informative as always. And um, I am going to continue sharing the screen here. Move the pin, share. Okay, so Carson, do you want to go over the membership? Sure, Nadia, thanks. Um, Thank you. I'm zooming in here. Um, okay. Yeah, I think we have, I think that's right. I see 132 is our total. Um, yeah, I don't think we could, we, um, there was one more that came in that we didn't yep. calculate that yet. Yep, so um yeah, so we are doing okay with membership. I think we're still down with teachers. So I think, I know Mr. Wusu, I think I think we talked about it at one point of how we can entice teachers to join. I know it's, um, they got a lot on their plate. So I know this becomes another thing, but um, trying to figure out ways to entice them. Um, 
and we have been we're, we've been talking about and we're actually going to send out hopefully this week if not next week um a spring membership drive and try to stoke some additional membership through through that and do another raffle so and be offering like some Clarksburg gear so that's forthcoming um but we're going to try and make a goal of 200 members um before after prom because we're going to use that as kind of one of our carrots here to to try to drive up membership there's an option i think i think correct me if i'm wrong that i'm pretty sure there's an option when you go to sign up for membership to donate additional funds yep so I know, but you also mentioned, I know through our um, back and forth chatting that there's another, there's another donation option, right? For people to donate funds for after prom. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So is it better that they use that option instead of donating through member hub because of any fees that we might in incur? I think they both have fees unless you write a check. Okay. Okay. So either one's probably fine then, but we'll use that then too, to say, Hey, you can, you can become a member. You can also donate extra. Um, but, but yeah. So I think that's it, unless anybody has any questions for, for me. I just want to say y'all are doing a great job. I think like, as you can see on the screen, like the faculty staff, there's opportunities there, right? But it's not the end of the year yet. So hopefully we can increase that, um, maybe hit 30. I know, right? right? <laughs> just yeah. 30, 27 yeah. then. Um, but the parent guardianship is up by like 15% and students is 7%. And I know like with my son, I was like, can you just get your peoples to like sign up? Yeah. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> but that's a challenge. I don't know what is with the students. So, um, so those are, I think those two areas, right? If we can, you know, pick that one up, I think that'll be great. Um, but I think you're doing great. This, it went up quite a bit. I mean, overall, I think it went, I believe it says it's 8% from 2021 to 2022. So yay. Right. And we're hoping to, you know, with it not being the end of the year, we're hoping we can get additional membership. So we'll see. We'll see what we can do with the spring raffle and the spring, the spring drive. So. Fading. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Anyone have any questions? If now we're going to move on forward. Okie dokie. I'm going to continue onwards and we're going to go to the delegate reports. She is unable to come today, so we'll just present it here. One of the big things with the delegate reports and the other one we're going to talk about in the cluster coordinator ones in the cluster coordinator presentations. Um, but one of them is the advocacy priorities for 2022 and 2023 or every year. So MCC PTA, which is the Montgomery County Council of PTAs, they um, review their advocacy priorities every year and the priority center around the following concerns, access to equitable opportunities, capital funds and facilities, operating funds, communications, curriculum, curriculum, diversity, equity and inclusion, health and wellness and school climate and security. So we had a meeting January 31st, I believe is when we voted for this and the advocacy priorities look like this. So if I can scroll up and down. I cannot. So this was adopted January 31st, 2023, and that was a lengthy meeting. That actually was an extended meeting from the beginning, from like, um, I think earlier time frame in January. So these are quite lengthy meetings and there was over a hundred delegates um, representing various schools that are in MCPS. And we go over each advocacy priority one by one. So for example, access to equitable opportunities, what are the concerns that we could add to the um, to the priorities to present to MCPS as something that we would like them to review and engage and, and build upon for their current um, for their current work work plans, right? Our capital funds and facilities, so like an example of equitable opportunities is um, providing adequate support to schools for special education and enrichment in every school, make additional resources available for all children who are eligible for free and reduced price meals, um, offer equitable opportunities to all children to engage in challenging programming, including multiple career paths, electives and after school activities. Capital funds and facilities, for example, um, let's see, in furtherance of equity, the socioeconomic makeup of the school population should be a factor in prioritization of projects, along with the condition and overutilization of buildings. Another one that they wanted to add here is the state and, cap the state and county capital budget should include improvements to infrastructure around schools, including roadways and adjacent pedestrian facilities to provide safe, safe routes to schools. I will say for next year, we will from our end hopefully we can incorporate sidewalks <laughs> i put i brought this up too late 
and they were already towards the end of it and they didn't they couldn't include sidewalks here sidewalks is a concern in Clarksburg High School from what I'm hearing because there was like that sidewalk there that's close to Rocky Hill and there's, there's no crossing there's no crosswalks so there's sidewalks and crosswalks so we wanted to add that but we'll put that for the next time the advocacy priorities I have shared it here let me put this link on so you all can review it from your end so this just highlights that the PTSA and the PTAs are not just, um, you know, parent groups for like social events, right? We're not just doing after prom. There's additional work that we do from our end that also impacts the school and impacts our communities and impacts the students. A great big part of the PTSA is the advocacy part of it. And that's advocating for all children to ensure that all children have equal access and opportunities to schools, to education. And, um, and the rights to have that education and the opportunities presented within it. So if you have any passion for you know, your students or even the, the school communities, please join the PTSA. You can join some of these meetings. If you would like to be a delegate, we can, um, we can vote to appoint you on there. There are, other, um, um, there are other meetings from the MCC PTA that again, surrounds advocacy work that you can join just as a PTSA member. I will share that in the subsequent um, slides, but this is the main one that the delegates were was working on. And, and so the link, I hope you can click it, is shared in the chat site there. So does anyone have any questions about our delegate report? Please keep me honest. I don't see, I don't think, I don't think I can see hands. So hold on, let me just make sure I open this up. What? Okay, if no questions, we are going to continue forward. Okay, that was this. So now it's a cluster coordinator report, cluster coordinator reports. Um, and the cluster coordinators for this year, we just had an election, is Teddy Wu, um, myself, and RT Varanasi, and then the area VP is Mini Varugis. So this is the cluster coordinate, coordinator reports that we share with all of the cluster schools in Clarksburg. And this particular one um, is going to talk about the Clarksburg cluster meetings. That was from February that we had, the or beginning of February. The family forum about fentanyl, the Clarksburg High School, I'm going to share the link. Um, for that particular forum, it was great that we kicked that 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 program was kicked off at Clarksburg High School. It was really really nice to put the school on the, on the map. And Mr. Wusu, you did an awesome job. Thank you. And digital resolution from the MCC PTA. That's another piece from the delegates um, that they were working on as well. And national PTA free lunch advocacy program. Volunteers are needed. And community conversation addressing anti-Semitism in Montgomery County Public Schools, and then then the MCC PTA anti-discriminatory discrimination advocacy meeting, which is going to be held on March first. So the first one is there was a recent cluster PTA meetings. This is held every month. So we have a cluster PTA president's meeting, and then we have a cluster coordinator area VP meeting with the area director, which is for our um, for our cluster is Mr. Christoph Turk. And the February 5th cluster um, PTA meeting, we held an election of the cluster coordinators and area VP. And the result is that R.C. Varanasi, who is the um, PTA president for Wilson Wims, Teddy Wu, PTA president for Snowden Farms Elementary, myself, um, we are the new cluster coordinators for this coming year. And then the area VP is again, Mini Varugis. And we will share more about the results of the cluster coordinator meeting with Mr. Christoph Turk, which was held just a few, that's just last week um, at the next meeting in March. And then, oops, the next line here it's around the family forum on fentanyl, which again was kicked off on January 28th, 2023. They're having another one. I believe it is at, I'm going to say Northwood. Is that right? Ah! <laughs> That's going to be held February 25th, right? Okay. Um, but we kicked it off. So yay, Clarksburg. Um, it was held on January 28th. One of the key takeaways of the forum, and I believe this is, I hear this all the time from me, Mr. Wusu, and Mr. Turk presented it as like the quote for this, which is see something, say something. And I was like, oh, I think that's one for Mr. Wusu. Um, but basically, it's there's this increased need 
for additional and just a robust communication within the school communities um, between parents, guardians, students, school staff, and teachers. If you see something, say something. If you feel something is off, you know, connect with, you know, our family members. Parents and guardians, we play a crucial role in students' awareness of substance use, misuse, and overuse. Um, additionally, at that meeting, attendees had a chance to complete the Narcan training, which is very interesting. And we also, uh, like, for the first um, few dozen or so people, they were able to actually get the Narcan. The others, we had to sign up to be able to, because they had to order it or whatnot. So um, I know I signed up for one, and then my son and then my husband. And the recording for the forum is here. If you would like to see it, if you would like to see it in person, feel free to visit Northwood High School. So you can um, actually attend the meeting directly. It was a very great meeting. And I'm, uh, from what I heard, they were gonna do more of these meetings at the various high schools and communities here because fentanyl is a increasing dangerous concern for all of our communities. And the impact of this does not only um, impact anyone from specific socioeconomic or racial or religious backgrounds, or even academic capabilities, it impacts everybody. And it's just very scary how fentanyl is in every little thing. I was reading a story of a fentanyl concern that was in caffeine pills. And a lot of our students, they can get very stressed out. So they, and this, this student, not here in the area, from what I understand, this student, um, ordered these pills from Snapchat and they took it and it and it resulted in a tragedy. So please engage your 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 teens, your family members, whomever, to be really, really careful about taking substances. Um, the next one here is digital resolution. So again, in the January 24th, um, the delegates had a very busy month in January. The MCCPTA delegates approved the digital resolution and um, the digital resolution was shared to MCPS. I am going to see if I can share these links here. Can you let me know if you can access these links? If not, we I will share them. Are these clickable? Thumbs up. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like it works, Nadia. I tried one of them. Okay, it went good. to a Google Drive and then, sorry, I'm trying to multitask here between screens. I think it worked. Oh, you're fine. Okay, good. So I'm just sharing here. <laughs> We've also shared this out, but we're just going to share this here for everybody here and then we'll share it out later on. So the digital resolution looks like this. So here is the MCC PTA resolution on digital balance. I hope you all can see this. Well, let me just make this a little bigger. So it, it basically is stating that in March 2020, Montgomery County Public Schools closed its doors to in-person instruction due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Students were issued Chromebooks to access lessons remotely, and MCPS students were required to access their curriculum almost exclusively online. So this reliance on digital resources continued in the 2021-2022 school year, in part because teachers were advised to prepare for students, classes or schools quarantining or reverting to remote learning on short notice because of COVID. So all, all, as all schools have returned to fully, have returned fully to in-person learning and virtual academy is available to those students who wish to continue learning remotely, the following resolution urges MCPS to align and institutionalize screen time expectations to support learning recovery and health now and in the future. The resolution urges MCPS to establish best practices and policies to ensure that use of digital resources and screen time are age appropriate, prioritize health and well-being, and are academically vetted. So it suggests that MCPS follow the Maryland State Department of Education and Maryland Department of Health's digital best practices as its roadmap. So the resolution um, is as follows that access and there's it's a lot. So I'm going to go over them in, in much detail, but there's a lot of guidances here that the delegates have incorporated as part of that resolution they have shared to MCPS. They have also shared a letter to Dr. McKnight which just looks like this. And then this is the, the press release for the resolution. So as can be seen here, 
again, the PTA is more than just like creating social events, but it is a lot of advocacy work involved with it. So this was a great work done by the MCC PTA and our delegate was also, our delegates were also involved in that conversation. The next one here is a support from the national, a support request from the national PTA for the free lunch advocacy program. The national PTA passed the updated, um, passed the, uh, and updated the improving school meals program position statement. And so they're asking if we have any PTA leaders whose child currently participates in the national school lunch program and is a passionate advocate for ensuring healthy, nutritious food options uh, that are, are available to all students in their communities. So the United States Department of Agriculture is currently seeking parent leaders to add their voices to the national conversation around how school nutrition departments move forward from the pandemic and return to a path towards ensuring school meals are as healthy as possible. Please email Kate Klabau directly with any recommendations. So that position letter looks like this. So it's over here. So let me share this link here so you all can see it. The next one here is a community conversation addressing anti-Semitism in Montgomery County Public Schools. This was shared by MCC PTA, so I'm sharing it with you all too. This is not a program by MCC PTA, but they wanted to share this because this is a rising concern in our area, right? Um, this community conversation is a partnership between Anti-Defamation League of Washington, D.C. and the Jewish Community Relations Council of Greater Washington. The community conversation will address the increase of anti-Semitic incidents in MCPS, share updates of the proactive efforts of ADL and JCRC within the districts, as well as their responses to these incidents. There will be a space for learning about how to talk to young people about anti-Semitism, as well as an open forum to hear concerns. I hope that's clickable. <laughs> Please let me know if that's clickable. It became really small. Um, I don't know if you all were aware, but there was an incident of graffiti that was in Snowden Farms Elementary. So we may feel we're like a far away from like, you know, DC or whatnot. We're, all, we're not in a little shelter of shorts, like bubble of whatnot, but anti-Semitism, discrimination or whatnot can impact our community as well. And that ties into the last slide here, which is MCC PTA Anti-Discrimination Advocacy Meeting. This is a placeholder, so please hold the date for March 1st. This particular session will discuss the recent discrimination incidents against our Jewish community, our Black community, discrimination generally, and advocacy steps we can all take to mitigate and prevent such destructive behaviors in the future. Community building and healing takes active steps of connection. Um, in that meeting, we will hear from several leaders to describe their perspectives on creating positive change, including student groups, faith leaders, and anti-bias leaders. We will also encourage feedback time from participants who wish to share their perspectives. So it's this part of, this is led by the MCC Diversity, Equity, Inclusion Committee, wants to support our families as best as we can around advocacy strategies and tools families can use to unify, restore calm, and proactively recommend to our school leadership positive responses in and out of the classroom when hateful incidents occur. I believe you all received a letter that Mr. Busu sent out, and I believe that's a great response from, you know, our own school leadership around these, you know, hateful incidents in whatever shape or form that can occur in our schools. And a lot of times, you know, kids are, they don't know what they're doing, or a lot of times they were pressured to do something. It could be any kinds of ways, right? But we need to be proactive and positive in our responses. And so if you want to engage other community advocates or other parents or whatnot, other community leaders, school leaders, please, please be welcome to, um, please, <laughs> please join this event on March 1st. The link will be shared in the coming week. Can you believe it's almost March 1st? Where did February go? But thank you all. So this is from the cluster coordinator presentations. If you have any questions, please let us know. No questions. I hope you can access the links. If not, we're going to share them in subsequent meetings. And now for the next part of the meeting, which is after prom. And pretty soon it'll be May. Because time is a ticking. Um, so with after prom, these are our updates. We have had periodically 
like bi-monthly meetings with Afterprom. The next meeting is February 26, 2023. Our fundraiser for Afterprom will officially start. The individual donations will officially start February 23rd, 2023. Um, we are connecting with the prom team to see how best we could support them um, if we are pay able to. The, and then additionally, the after prom theme is magical carnival. <laughs> You'll see from my from from the what's it called from the um, poster. <laughs> and then the prom theme is night among the stars. We are also connecting and this is where the April 14th assembly is about. Um, we're connecting with the MAD with that organization, MCPD and Solar Organization for the Substance Awareness Assembly. And this assembly is supported from the grant from the Montgomery County Council, from the Montgomery County Collaboration Council. We received a grant for $2,000 to support after prom and the Substance Awareness Assembly. Um, we're still looking for sponsors. So if you have anyone who would like to support this event, and again, after prom, though it's fun and it's like, it's social, but it's also an important event because historically prom and graduation months, which is about April until June, July, right? They tend to be the months with the highest, with the highest traffic fatalities in the teen um, in the teen age group. So please make sure that um, we, again, increase awareness and conversations is about substance use. And then, you know, hopefully you can direct the teens if you're going to prom or after prom, if you're going to prom that they may be best to do after prom, it's fun. So they don't get into that, uh, you know, concerning situation, um, especially around substance use. Um, da, 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 da. So this is the after prom fundraiser poster. Ah. We kind of used the template from last year. So like, we're, this looks great. So the requested donation is $23 to honor the class of 2023. And if you count the butterflies, they're seven because 2023 equals seven. <laughs> it's been that kind of day, y'all. And so we will be sharing this on again February 23rd, 2023. So there are different options here for the donations, member hub, PayPal, or a check. And it says here, and let me make this bigger. So after promise is safe and alcohol free night for students to enjoy following their prom. They don't have to attend prom to go to after prom, and it's completely free. So that is the after prom fundraiser poster. We will share that Wednesday, once 23rd, Thursday, Thursday. Um, over here, we do have to share the budget because after prom is part of the PTSA line item budgets. And so as of this moment, um, the projected expense amount is going to be, I'm going to round it up, 10000 <laughs> We got 2000 from um, the coalition council and then we still need about eight thousand left um current and then we're going to work our best to make it under ten thousand the line item for after prom in the budget for the ptsa is twelve thousand and i will say this is relatively small compared to other ones other after proms are like thirty thousand dollars i have no idea what that what they bought with it because we were doing fine with eight thousand last year so I hope we can get 30,000, but I don't know. Um, one concern that with the variables that we have to um, account for is the increase in prices due to inflation and then the room reservation fees at CHS because now as a PTSA, we have to reserve the room directly, not through the school. So I don't know how we can arrange that. Nudge, nudge, Mr. Wusu. <laughs> um, this is the fundraising possibilities. So again, we want to share with you the fundraising possibilities for after prom. As you can see here, let me just make this smaller. It's weird. Sorry. There we go. As you can see here, if at $23, we have 250 families that do donate $23, we can raise up to $5,750. If we have these, this amount of business sponsors, I didn't include the platinum because we didn't get any last year. Um, we got a lot of hundreds and we got a lot, we got a lot of bronzes and silver sponsors. So if we get like 10 in total, um, we can raise 1,450. If the cluster school support us, we can raise another $800. So the total amount I put here, including an additional $1,000 grant, I'm trying to see if we can do 
um, another grant um, from the county is about $1,000, um, we can raise up to 11,000. If not, that's completely fine, but we need to raise at the minimum about 10,000 to ensure after prom can, um, you know, be fun and exciting. And then, um, and it can be actualized. And any any questions about after prom before we continue to the new businesses? No questions. Okay. We're going to continue onwards to the new businesses. What we're looking forward to from the PTSA for March, April, May, and June. So March, we're looking to do a food drive with Clarksburg Can to provide produce and or non-perishables to families in the communities who could use our support. And it could be from Clarksburg High School, the middle schools, or the elementary schools. Um, so hopefully we can connect with all the schools and see what level of support we can provide. Um, as we shared earlier, tutor doctor for the SAT mocks exam, hopefully before the March 22nd um, actual SAT day at Clarksburg High School. And then hopefully for the March PTSA meeting, we can have a session where our special topic could be with Board of Education member Julie Yang and Board of Education member Grace Rivera Oven. In April, it would be April 14th, uh, the substance use assembly, whether it's at the school or virtual, we're still determining that. Um, community event with the hypnotist. No, I didn't say that right. Hypnotist. <laughs> he says he can do a fundraiser of sorts. So um, hopefully we can arrange that for um, the PTSA and after prom, either April. It's got to be April. Um, and then May 5th is after prom. And though it's prom and after prom, prom is from 11 to, sorry, prom is from 7 to 11. After prom is from 11 till 3 a.m. So after prom is from May 5th to May, to May 6th. Then after that, it's a teacher. I think I need to take the, I need to take that week off. Then after it's a teacher appreciation week, which is May 8th to May 12th. If you have any ideas how we can support and show our gratitude to our teachers, because they do take care of our wonderful, but also maybe crazy kids. I know mine is. And um, and then hopefully we'll um cluster Clarksburg Yard has reached out to us to partner up for some level of a cluster festival event. So maybe towards the end of May or, or, or sorts. And then June, um, we hope we can um, implement the scholarship program here. We do need to start that probably about April so we can have that registration process and reviewing the applications. We also need to prepare for the senior breakfast and then the end of the year CHS, CHS staff luncheon. So these are March, April, May, and June. And then uh, the next PTSA meeting is March 21st, 2023. Um, currently, the current special topic of, on the top of our heads is that community advocacy experience with the newly elected Board of Education members, Julie Yang and, and Grace Rivera Oven. If you have any other one, please don't hesitate to let us know. Again, your support and your input is what really makes our organization as great as it is and as strong as it is. And how great it is depends on all of us and our involvement here. So I think that is it from my end. We do have... What time is it? Oh, we do have about like five minutes to eight o'clock if you want to end at eight or 30 minutes until 830 if you want to end at 830. But um, I'm going to end my part here. And I guess we can have like a short question answering session. If you have any questions or concerns, Mr. Abusu is here. Um, we have a lot of parents here as well um, who may have experiences with whatever questions you have. Um, so I'm going to end it. So the meeting ends at 7.56 from our end. Does anyone have any questions for what we have shared today? No questions? Are we good? Good? I do have one thing to share, though, and this is from the Clark, not Clarksburg. This is from the Maryland Day at University of Maryland. I don't know what um, what grade levels your students are in, but this is great feedback, and I think it applies to um, high school as well. And it's, this is from the session with with the pre health um, track, because my son wanted wants to do pre health track, and they were sharing how they are recommending students to really engage their professors 
and the any faculty members and the advisors because their recommendations are crucial to be able to get to like med school, for example. It's going to be very hard. Like, so they say that there are students who may have failed, like they're like 4.0 GPA, their MCAT was like 520, but they have never engaged their teachers or their professors. They have never engaged anybody else. They haven't engaged their advisors. So by the time they want to apply to med school, one, they didn't get in, and two, they were missing certain components of it, especially the recommendation parts of it, because a professor is not gonna recommend somebody they have no history with, right? You don't know them, they're, they're not gonna know you from Adam or Eve, right? So that also applies to the high schools. And I'm trying to do this with my son. And I say, you need to engage your teachers, take benefit of their office time, of their lunch time, get to know them, inqu you know, inquire what they're working on with the schools, get to know them so they can understand if something that they're working on can you know, match a passion that they have or maybe um, ignite a passion that they have because that's crucial to not only for a possible recommendation, but when they're writing their college essays. Because you don't want to write a college essay that's, that's what's, what, what's the word? That doesn't really tell your story. And I'm trying to share this with my son and he's in 11th grade and you know, sometimes kids, it goes here and then it goes up. <laughs> so we want to make sure it kind of sticks like right in the middle there. And so that may take a lot of us to kind of let them know. And it's starting to stick in like my son, for example, he shared this with me the other day because he really ends up really liking volleyball. And he's like, you know, I didn't realize how fun being in a team was because he hated being in a team when he was in when he was in like elementary schools. And I'm like, you're just figuring this out in 11th grade <laughs> when you're about to graduate next year. <laughs> so if you, anyone here has ninth graders, you know, bring, maybe bring that up in the conversation <laughs> so they can start and learn and like find that passion for even a sport or another activity at a much younger time frame, so they can help build their narrative and then build their connection to that particular um, activity. So whenever they have their college essay, they're not gonna be scrambling because they're like, I don't know what I like. And if that, that's, that, if that's the case, that's fine too. But then at the same time, having that awareness from an earlier time frame or building it up will really help you. And it also helps us set up, helps the kids set up a great habits for when they're in college. Cause one, we're not there anymore. So there's a part of me that's a little concerned, but then at the other part, I still have a year to work with that. <laughs> But if you have ninth graders, you have like four years to work with us. So that's my piece from what I learned from the um, the University of Maryland um, event. So that was really, really helpful. It was really long, but it was really, really helpful. Any thoughts or perspectives about that? We have, it's eight o'clock, but if you want to chit chat some more, you are more than welcome to. Oh, a raised hand. <laughs> yes, Fong, how are you? Hi, um, that's a really good advice. Um, as, as a mom to, to senior and a sophomore, I know my daughter filled out the senior package for her counselor. And uh, I saw that as an opportunity for my son, who's, who's a sophomore, and I asked him, okay, your sister did this. I think it's in your interest to, fill, to look through the, the package and fill out as much as you can. If you see pages that are, you know, if you, if you have pages that are blank, that you know you need to work on. So um, yeah, I mean, reach out to them and talk to them as early as possible. I mean, freshman years, it's, it's, a, it's a great opportunity to do that. Um, just don't wait too late. I love that. Thank you for sharing. I wonder if we can share what's in that senior package, Mr. Wusu, because I wonder if any, I think that would benefit like the freshmen and sophomores, because yeah. I saw, right? Yeah, the um, I believe the packet is on our website and also in my oh. in the newsletter under Miss uh, Somerville's maybe um, portion. Um, okay, so it's there. I just have not read the yeah. newsletter, even though I go on it. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I don't read my son's newsletter <laughs> either. But it's it's um it's a it's it's basically it's a, it's a lot of um it's just a lot of information so that way the counselors aren't just trying to search 
down or teachers aren't trying to search about writing a recommendation. And, you know, it's like a brag sheet. It asks for parent input. It just, there's lots of different things there. So that way, when somebody's writing something or has to submit information about the child, it can just be all in one, one space as much as possible. I will take a look at that. Thanks for sharing that, um, Fuang. Am I pronouncing your name right? Yes, you are. Thanks. Oh, yay. Thanks, Nadia. And because um, I don't have my, my oldest son is an 11th grader, so I don't have a senior. So that thing, this will be really helpful, especially if we don't have seniors to, you know, have that ability to review any packets that come with them. I think maybe we can do some level of presentation about that so we can, you know, and maybe you can share your perspectives as well on that meeting, too. So I think this is great because there's a lot, right? I'm kind of feeling a little overwhelmed myself as a junior. I'm like, you're, why are you not starting yet? Have you made your data for the colleges? Yeah. I mean, I'm not like that mean, but you know, I, that does come up as a conversation. Anyone else have any input or anything they would like to share? Again, this is a free room. Maybe we can do two more minutes and we can end at 8.05. What we did with uh, my older son and we're doing for my 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 junior now is um is basically kind of having him like we we said okay pick thirty colleges whatever it is and do research on those thirty colleges so that we can narrow it down to four or five or ten whatever it's going to be but different colleges different subject areas that you might be interested in and then he has to spend like maybe 30 minutes on each one and over like a good six months time to just kind of investigate, go online, do a virtual tour, whatever it is. And therefore you can kind of see, yeah, I like this. Yeah, I don't like this. And then it also helps us with, if we have an opportunity to go visit these places in person. Um, some we, we, you know, if he's doing, you know, something in Waco, Texas, that's not going to happen. Um, but it, at least he, he, he's, Try, like we're forcing him to do it, but he's trying to figure out okay what he likes about something or just the differences between schools because there's so much you know. Um, and then when you see it, like we saw in Maryland, um, there's not a um, the lecture halls. There's some of them are big, like Maryland. I think they said the the biggest one might be 150, but that's early on, and after that it gets smaller and smaller. And when we were leaving, we went into the computer science. Clarksburg is uh, one of their top 25 source schools for computer sci. Um, but just going in there and seeing that it's a small space, pretty much as big as um, a regular Clarksburg classroom, but there are no individual desks. There are all just these round, like cafeteria-sized tables, and people are sitting there, and everybody has their own laptop, and the teacher's actually in the middle of the room at another round table and just shooting off information, and people are kind of working in groups. Um, and it's just it's just different. So it's it's it. It's supposed to resemble, to the best extent possible, different work environments um, that you know kids can, you know, these these students. And then there's also they have um, a, a makerspace area where you can form your own businesses, and they're working to to do different things. And and the surprising part is that there are a lot of obviously international students. So you, you think, oh, it's it's another Montgomery County, but it's not. It's it's people from all over the world and. Um, they they're on a mission they're they're not there there to play they're they're on, they're on a mission and so just kind of getting that feel of okay these are other people um you know is is sometimes daunting but it also puts things in perspective like you said so um that piece about looking at different colleges whether it's a small college or a big college so that way you can narrow it down um to something that is of interest to them because it is there four years Yes, and to touch base on that, we were talking about that earlier. So one, the University of Maryland Discover Maryland Day, I believe it's going to be held every President's Day, it seems like it, right? Um, or at least this one is President's Day, which was yesterday. And it's completely free. You have to be there between 7.45 to 8.30, which my son loved. <laughs> he loved waking up that early when he didn't have to go to school and drive you know, almost an hour to somewhere else to be in school and sit in lectures. He loved that. But at the same time, it did allow him to be more open to Marilyn um, because he, 
I don't know if you all kids have this, but mine was like, I don't want to stay in Maryland. I want to get as far away as possible from Maryland because I've just been here too long. And then I said, we'll give this a chance. And I think after the, especially after the presentation about the pre-health one, he became more open to considering Maryland and, you know, really applying and being a bit more um, elated about maybe even going there, right? But there was one part of the, um, of the presentations during the opening section where they were had the students leading the like a discussion panel where they were like you know talk it over with your kids and ask have them ask themselves can i see myself in the school for four years for example like your kids may really really this idea and vision of say princeton right like they like i want to go to princeton because it's like princeton is like ivy league example but can you really see yourself there and really love the surrounding areas for four years? An example of that when we we went we were we were visiting the Carolinas for a vacation and we had a chance to visit Duke and UNC. Duke looks gorgeous, right? But when you visit the campus for my son, he was like, I don't know if I'll feel comfortable actually going to Duke. I mean, not that he could get in, we don't know yet, right? But at the same time, to even apply, like really ask really have the kids ask themselves, can I really feel comfortable in being a part of this school for a significant portion of my life, day in and day out? So I thought that was really, really profound. And hopefully that will help narrow the, the scope of the search whenever our kids are looking for schools to apply to. And so like such campus visits are really crucial and I really feel strongly about it, but also open their eyes to the schools in our area. Like Maryland, for example, and then, you know, maybe UMBC and then Lake Towson and then there's what Georgetown and there's American and there's there's a lot of schools here. I grew up in West Virginia. There's a lot of schools here. That school is only WVU in West Virginia. So uh, that was really great. And hopefully if you have sophomores, I did see some sophomores in the um, in the in the event the other day. So if you have so if you have freshmen and their sophomores next year, do sign up for that. I think it's really, really fun and it can help our kids and open their eyes to the possibility of Maryland. It's nearby. And then um, and then help them to expand their mindset about college and maybe opening up their minds about taking their academic journeys a little bit more seriously. So if there's any other questions, feel free to chime in. If not, we can end the call. I, I, I can talk all night. It's, it's been that kind of day. So I will end my part here uh, again, um, but I'm going to officially end the recording here. And I thank you all for joining for this wonderful PTSA meeting. Oh, that's not what I want to do. And then hope you all have a very great evening. Thank you for joining in. Thank you so much.